What's going on, guys? Testing one, two, testing one, two. Let me know if you guys can hear and see me. Tony here hanging out with you guys from Paradise Garage. And just want to make sure that you guys can hear and see me. So type in the chat super quickly if you guys can hear and see me. And we can get started with the Q&A. I'm going to go for about 30 minutes answering your specific questions when it comes to auto body and uh, whatever projects you got going on. So let me know if you guys can hear and see me. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Uh, we got Keith Coleman from DC. How's it going? Tony Sensei, Harold Schwinn. What's going on, guys? Longtime VIP member, Ohio is in the house. Big Red. What's up? What's up, Keith? Loud and clear, says Dan. Thank you very much for the comments. Um, so, yes, yeah, so it seems like um, one of my longtime followers, Mr. Russ, kind of got pissed off because my support girl sent an email and we didn't include his name in the email. He got kind of bent out of shape because he's been supporting me. And I know Russ always supports. But uh, I just want to make note, some of you guys who get my emails, sometimes I don't send them out. I have my girls cover for me because I just can't make it. Um, I, I'm too busy. I got other things going on. So sometimes the emails are coming from my support team as well. Just FYI. So sometimes I'll leave out like some personal information or whatever, um, you know, from the followers. And it's not for, you know, it's not for a reason. It's just because my girl is taking over the email. So just FYI. Don't, you know, don't be offended if I don't include your name in, in some of my email broadcasts or whatever I do. But whenever I'm on live, you know, I got you. I got your back here. Uh, so anyway, how's everybody doing? What's going on? Any new projects? Um, any new, you know, we got a lot of new things coming up. Um, I'm actually in the process of moving this bus over to the another section of the property so we get some better internet connection and uh and whatnot anyway <clears throat> uh just type in the chat guys whatever questions you got and also how many newbies are tuning in for the first time newbies type in first timers uh if you are a learn auto body vip member type in learn auto body vip i know we got some vips already on the call right now i know more people are going to be coming on in just a bit uh but for all you newbies just tuning in Let's go ahead here and I'm going to send you a link where you can get some free training at learnautobodyandpaint.com right over here. And um, and yeah, let's get started. So this is your time. Whatever questions you got for auto body, and, um, just send it in. And if you also want to send in pictures or a short video, you can send it at Tony at learnautobodyandpaint.com um, so we can check those images out. And I also replied to another one uh, by video the other day. And uh, I uploaded it, on, uploaded it on YouTube. Newbie VIP, Keith Coleman. Awesome, Keith. What kind of project are you working on? Any specific questions that we can help you out with? Now is the time. Um, we're getting back on the the moped project this week. We'll be priming it and getting it ready for paint. Um, now that the garage is basically empty with all the lumber that we had in there, uh, we can get back on our auto body and paint projects. So let's see. What else we got going? Okay, so we got a question right here from, from Tom. What's up, Tom? So Tom says, after sandblasting, uh, do I need to do anything to prep the part um, or can I go straight directly to DTM primer? You can go straight to primer um, after sandblasting. <clears throat> so if you, make sure it's clean, right? Just make sure it's clean. Blow it off. Um, the only thing I would do is wipe it off okay use like a wax and grease remover wipe it all off blow it off you could even tack it 
and um, and blast your primer on it. <clears throat> What's happening with the one wheel video? Um, that's what I would like to ask. My video guy is on it. I'm waiting for it. He's supposed to be getting it back to me any day now, uh, along with the other videos that he's supposed to be getting back to me. It's been, he's been kind of, well, he's been sick. That's, that's what he's been telling me. He's been sick for about a week last week. So he should be all good now. Um, getting back into it. So hopefully I'll be releasing that this week. Keith Coleman says nothing yet. Just taking a Bruce Lee approach as you recommended. Cool. 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 Um, what are you working on though? What kind of project are you working on? How am I? Rich Reese says I'm doing great. Doing great. Doing great. Again, no newbie question is too too new or too stupid to ask. You know, whatever you're working on, um, we're going to go ahead and answer it for you. Help you out so you can get to the next level when it comes to auto body and paint. <clears throat> Let's see here. So I'm thinking after the moped project we'll probably do the van the van is next on the list after the little candy respray that we do on the moped uh and then i'm thinking um because we got this new piece of heavy equipment on the property here i don't know if you guys can see it um i'm thinking of doing like a custom two-tone paint job on on this cat and i took a video today i don't know if you can see the machine uh, I took a video today up close and personal on the machine, um, kind of telling you the ideas on, on what I want to do as far as a paint job on that thing. But I think that'll be a cool little base coat, clear coat demo paint job for you guys. Um, we're not going to paint the whole thing because it's going to be crazy taking off all the hydraulics and parts. We're not going to do that. We're going to make it two tone, keeping it the uh, the caterpillar cat color uh, plus another I don't know. I'm thinking like a purple. Purple and yellow look well together. <clears throat> what is the best clear coat you recommend? Um, you know, you can get the best depending on your budget. So what is your budget? You know, because you can get the best for under 150 bucks. You can get the best for under 300 bucks. You know, what's what's your budget? Um, but if you're looking for an overall, like medium grade, good clear coat that I've been using, I've been using um, Acme uh, that comes from Sherman Williams. And um, I get it from Sherman Williams. It's an Acme brand clear coat. Really good clear. No dieback at all, really. And it's about $110 per gallon kit um, here in Hawaii. And it's a lot cheaper probably in the mainland where you are. So, so yeah, not bad, not bad at all. Where are you guys tuning in from? Type in the chat where you're tuning in from. Let me know if you mostly guys are in the States. Uh, if you're looking to spend a lot of money, you can check. I mean, Chroma Clear is a good clear by DuPont. PPG has a really good clear coat. Um, the Deltron series by PPG. And if you, you know, are looking to, to go like a, a nice brand name, then you could even try the House of Color clear coats, which I like as well. Uh, but those are a little bit more in the high price, maybe around 300, uh, give or take, three, 350 uh, for a one gallon kit. The UK, cool, 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 cool. Canada, sweet. Um, Robzilla says, how does that clear you use compared to Matrix? Um, I would say it's it's really good. I I think it's better. I, I really like the Sherman uh the the Acme from Sherman Williams. Did you see my video on the rear spoiler? Where'd you post that in Facebook? Or did you send me an email? I don't remember. I don't remember that. You might want to resend it, Charlie. Have you tried 
Mipa. I have not tried Mipa. Keith says, I work construction. I'm thinking about starting some custom hard hats just to get my feet wet. However, I'll be playing around with personal vehicle after it leaves the shop. Awesome. Awesome, Keith. Yeah. So anything plastic like that, you could just sand down and just base coat, clear coat super easily um, as far as um, painting hard hats. Charlie, did you just email that to me or was it a while back? Let me see if I can get that. I'm pulling my email up right now. Um, I don't see it yet. I'm just trying to see if I can pull it up quick. I don't see it. So you might want to maybe just try to resend it quick so I can pull it up. Oh, last week, Monday. I think I missed it. I think I missed it, guys. Yeah, so, all right, guys, type in your questions. We're going to be on for another 20 minutes, give or take, answering your auto, body, and paint questions, whatever you got going, whatever stage you're at. Um, if you have questions with sandpapers, primers, prepping, painting, spray guns pressure settings um whatever charlie if you can resend that that'll be cool maybe i can pull it up right now and um and check it out uh do you do you use Merca long roll sticky for dura blocks you can use whatever you want really they got velcro they got sticky you could use sticky i like velcro um I used to like sticky, but I, I kind of like Velcro now. You know, you have to worry about the the pads going bad with the stickiness and all that. And I think Velcro is a lot better because um, you can also get them wet. You know, if you want to wet sand, if you want to use your DA and kind of like wet sand a little bit, you could. Um, but yeah, I still have a lot of sticky rolls left over that I need to switch out some of my pads and use, go through some of the sticky rolls that I have. Um, but as far as sandpaper brands, um, I like Kovacs. Been using Kovacs for a while. Um, Merca is a good brand as well. Um, you know, whatever whatever works. You know, sometimes you're going to go through certain brands and you're going to figure out which ones are better, and and uh, and you just go from there. Yep, yep, yep. So what else we got going? It's pretty much it. Can't believe it's almost February. February 2022, almost. It's so crazy. Uh, what do you recommend for small businesses still working from home to get more consistent clients? Uh, you're talking about... Um, promoting your your auto body right your shop robzilla so i would basically just use social media social media marketing post you know create like a facebook page for your shop um and start posting a bunch of before and after shots you know um and just doing things like that in your local area You could even, you could even run, uh, you know, run some sponsored ads, some posts on Facebook if you want to kind of pop up when people are looking for paint jobs and whatnot. Sean says, is epoxy primer good for going over bare metal uh, that was cleaned up? Yes, epoxy is good for going over bare metal. Absolutely. 
Um, some 2K filler primers, like the one I got, um, you could go over bare metal as well. Um, I'm using, currently I'm using European uh, Genuine Coatings, ECG, EGC. Um, and it says that you can go right over bare metal. I don't, if I'm going to go over large bare metal, I'm going to use an epoxy primer and then followed with a 2K filler primer on top of it. You don't have to sand the epoxy, by the way. You can just let that cure, let it set for two, three hours, and then spray your 2K filler primer right on top of it. Um, but if I have small areas, you know, like a, like a little piece like that, bare metal showing or some edges of a hood or a fender or whatever, then I'll just put the 2K right over it with no issues. Rusted metal that was cleaned up. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So what other projects are you working on, guys? Any other projects? Let's see here. How many newbie VIPs that just literally signed up within the past week? Any newbies who signed up in the past week? Uh, what is your method for a spoiler? Now, what do you mean my method for a spoiler? Installing and painting or what are you looking for? Give me some more information. Claude says abrasives are made like cake. No two batches are the same. Yeah. Sometimes uh, you're going to get a bad batch and, you know, whatever. Uh, painting, base, clear, and prep. So, let's see. From new to prep. So, um, I'm not sure, but... <clears throat> let's see, let's see, let's see. Painting, base, clear, and prep. So, sometimes your spoilers or your, your aftermarket parts that you get are going to come pre-primed, all right? And in most cases, you could just literally just wet sand with 400 grit and paint right over it. Sometimes you want to make sure you know your foundation or what it is. So what I like to do, if I'm doing a custom job or something for my personal project, um, I like to just reprime it myself. So I'll, I'll scuff it down with like a 320 grit you know, just, just sand it all down, get it kind of like rough with 320, 280, 320. I'll spray two coats of 2K filler primer on it. You know, a good primer that I always use that I have some, you know, leftover that I mix up and spray on. Um, I'll let that flash and then basically water sand that down. You could dry sand or wet sand. It's up to you. I like to wet sand, um, you know, fill in any imperfections if there's any rock chips or fiberglass gel holes or whatever you got right you're going to want to make sure you fill all that up wet sand it down um and then paint it okay so so that's pretty much the process <clears throat> um and Rich Reese, are you VIP, Rich Reese? I think I think you are because we cover up. We have a bunch of series in Learn Auto Body VIP, where we go over um, put installing new spoilers, you know, custom painting and molding body kits and all that. That'll be a good series for you to watch uh, because it's A to Z on that exact process that I just described to you. Um, so yeah, you might want to check that out. If you're not a VIP, you might want to just get some free content. Uh, over here at learnautobodyandpaint.com. Just click that link and um, you can go there. Is that going through? Yeah, it's going through. Okay. Um, let's see. Just scrolling through quick. Chet says, sagging runs. What's the best method on clear coat? All right. So you could literally get a razor blade if you have some big drip runs. Uh, make sure it's dry. Okay. Give it, give it a good, at least 
two days, I would think, you know, sometimes your, your clear is going to be soft. So if you're cutting it with a razor blade, just be careful because sometimes as you're cutting it, you're literally going to peel off the whole run down to the base coat. It, that could happen. Um, but on big drips, you can get a, a brand new razor blade and you can just literally, what I do is I just, just slide it up the panel and you can just cut, cut it, cut them off. Right. And then you can wet sand them down with like 800 grit to get it flat. And then you could go down to 15, 2000 and buff. Um, if it's a darker color uh, that you're buffing over, you can go down to 2,500 to 3000. I normally don't go down to 3000, 25 will be my max, but you could go down to 3000 and then buff it out. Um, some people will lay, and I don't do that. I usually, you know, I go by eye or I, you can put a light coat of primer over your sag area and your run area. Okay. Um, and then basically block it out. And as you sand, you're going to see the high spots cut down and then whatever's not cut will be a low spots. And you'll see the primer as your back, your back layer. You know what I mean? So the idea is to basically block everything out until your primer starts sanding off. And that's when you know you got it pretty flat and you could buff over. Okay. Um, generally, you want to buff over uh, 2,500 grit. No, 2,000 grit. Okay. If you're going over darker colors, you can wash it down a little bit more. Uh, go down to 2,500 grit, um, even 3,000 if you choose to. Keith Coleman says, if painting a tractor trailer, for instance, how is it done to maintain its consistency? What do you mean? What do you mean? Like painting it in pieces? Like, what do you mean? I don't know what you mean by maintaining its consistency of what? What are you trying to say? Keith Coleman, can you just give me a little bit more? Um, Ronnie, Ronnie, Ronnie said... Have PPG base that's been frozen a couple times in Texas. It's chunky after being, after being, but not shaken yet. Is it still good? I. It's probably still good, as long as you mix it out. I would just reduce it, mix it really well, and if it looks good, then just it should be okay. Test a small spot somewhere. Um. Usually the clumps, the chunks will dissolve if you add a little bit of reducer and just mix it really well. You have to mix it really well, though. If you can take it down and get it shooken or, you know, shake it up a little bit, you could try that. But um, I don't. If it looks good, you know, after you mix it up, if it looks good, then you're good. If it doesn't look good, if it starts separating inside because you got some water in it somehow, some condensation, I don't know then you might want to just chuck it. Okay, great. Um, Harold Schwinn says, I'm on my first project for two years. I guess I don't know what you mean by paint flashing. So paint flashing um, basically is letting it dry. Letting it dry so you can put your next coat on it. Okay. So when I say primer flashing, it's, it's like you're giving it the flash time. So you can put another coat of primer on it or it's dry enough to where you can sand it. Okay. Curing, letting it cure so you can sand it down and do what you got to do to it. Sections, I'm guessing, left to right. Um... Yeah, well, when you're painting, Keith, you're going to be painting a panel at a time anyway, unless you're doing like a candy paint job. But if you're doing a candy paint job on panels that are separated, just make sure you have good lighting. Make sure the panels are next to each other. So when you're painting and when you're doing a candy or whatever, you can you can look at each part and, and check out the consistency and color. That's how you do it. That's the only way to do it. Right. So if you go and you, you're a little light on this panel you know, after two coats, then you just got to probably just give it a couple, a little bit more, you know, a little, another coat or so to, to balance it out. 
Sean Gray says, what tape would you recommend? They have a hood that is flat black now, but wants a gloss pearl. What's up, David? Wants a gl- but my wife, I think you said my wife wants a gloss pearl white on the lower section of the hood. It's a 56 Chevy truck. I'm worried about the color's edge. What tape would you recommend? I have a hood that is flat black now, but my wants to get a gloss pearl white on the lower section of the hood. 56 Chevy truck. Uh, are you say Sean, are you saying you're going to be doing a two-tone? Are you two-toning it? So my question to you is, what type of paint is on it now? So you got flat black. but you want to two-tone it okay i would use a fine line tape it's called a fine line tape okay it's going to give you a nice edge um separation between your two colors and they come in an eighth and a quarter inch so you would use that i would use the quarter inch to make your line and then you would tape that with your paper to cover the rest of the hood or whatever Okay, and generally you're going to be using a good masking tape. Uh, the 3M yellow three-quarter masking tape is a good tape uh, or um, American brand masking tape. I have American brand currently in the garage. Hal says, thanks. Much understand now. I think I've been doing two coats too soon appreciate it yeah you want to make sure your first coat is pretty much set up you know and and ready to accept your second coat you don't want to spray over it when it's still super wet you want to let that dry up a little you know and uh and give it another coat usually primer 20 minutes 15 20 minutes if you're spraying a 2k around 15 minutes you should be good for your next coat okay of course it depends on your your temperatures and all that. But, you know, we're talking about spraying in 75 to 85 degrees. Hopefully this helps. Is this helping, guys? Any other questions? We'll answer a couple more and then um, and call it a day, and I'll see you guys on next week. Claude says, I need help sourcing paint. They want 550 bucks plus tax for a quart of PPG base. That's a lot of money, man. Is it red? What color is that? It's got to be red. And four liters of clear here in Northern Canada. Are there online stores where I can purchase coatings? Um, You can check out TCP Global. There's got to be, I would just Google it. You're in Canada. I'm not sure what the stores they got in Canada. Um, But you could try eBay. You know, you could pick up a gallon kit of clear coat pretty inexpensively. Yeah, I knew it. Reds, reds are the most expensive color um, ever, ever made because it's just the the pigments and everything that's needed to make red. It's the most expensive. That's why I said, is it red? But that's a lot of money. Um, one thing you could do if you want to cheapen out a little bit is don't get the highest brand. Why don't you go for like uh, um, an Omni Plus brand? Instead of PPG, Omni is the cheaper sub brand of PPG. You can get, um, but you can get not not getting the cheapest Omni. You can get something called Omni Plus, which is a better a better base coat. That because sometimes you can't even make certain paints in the cheap Omni, but if you upgrade to Omni Plus, no selection. Yeah, that's tough, man. I don't know what to tell you there. Yeah, you're just going to have to call around other paint shops. What paint shop are you calling? Your local auto body paint shop or who are you dealing with? Is it your personal car or or what? Because if it's a customer's car, I mean, hey, customers got to pay for it. It is what it is. Ronnie said, Maple Leaf Airbrush in Canada has paint. You might want to try that. Car Quest. Yeah, why don't you try Napa? Claude, Napa makes paint as well. They they uh, they make 
a P they they will make you PPG paints. So they sell PPG there. Tunnel cover for the sun. Cool. Um, David says, what is the best way to apply candy? Like walking around the car if I got to paint the whole car. Uh, yes. And we, we covered that in VIP. We did the uh, Miata series in candy red, David. Aren't you VIP, David? Um, well, when you're doing candy, you're going to want to walk the length of the car. So you don't have to go around the car. But if you're spraying the side of the car, you're going to want to make sure you go down the whole side of the car. Okay, go down the side of the car, the hood, the front end, you're going to want to just do the whole front end at one shot. You know what I mean? And just make sure you have good lighting. Good lighting is super, super important. Okay. That's why I highly recommend the GunBud Ultra lighting system. Snaps onto the front of your gun and you can see everything while you paint and this is what it looks like right here okay check it out they're on amazon on ebay good product i was moving my bus yesterday and i left my computer up and the thing fell and i cracked it kind of sucks but i ordered a screen 450 dollars for a screen can you believe it crazy prices David, I don't mind. Send me a video, you know, what you plan to do with your uh, with your candy paint job. I'll be, you know, I can make a video reply helping you out. But um, watch the Mazda Miata series. We're also going to be doing candy on this little excavator that I have out here. It's probably going to be the first candied excavator on the island here. And we're going to record that that thing as well probably going to go with a purple candy on um, pieces and parts of the excavator. Um, I think it'll look super, super cool. We'll go with a bright purple. Purple and yellow look good anyway. The red Miata is candy. Yep. And if you're, what color candy are you doing, David? Because if you're a newbie and you're painting candy, it's highly recommended to to spray a candy over a similar color. So if you're going to be doing a, a red candy, you want to come out with a red looking car, then get a red base coat, spray your whole thing red. Okay. And then go over with your red candy. It's going to make it a lot easier for you to blend your candy and spray your candy because it's your foundation is already red. Okay. If you're going to be doing it um, over the silver, you better be very, very good when it comes to laying on candy. Um, you know, your overlap, you're going to want to overlap a little bit more. It's not like a 50-50 overlap, like base coats and clear coats. You're going to want to do like a 75% overlap, okay? Uh, and you're going to want to be consistent, okay? Uh, your spray gun um, speed and distance is going to be super crucial. So, I would only recommend doing candy, David, if you've actually painted a car before in regular, regular base coat, clear coat, at least, you know, a couple times. But um, as long as you got spray gun settings, distance and speed, you know, down pat under your belt where you're comfortable without running, then yeah, go for the candy job. Unless you're doing something smaller, you know, if you're doing like a little gas tank or a single part, then just try test it out. But um, I'm going to do a, a blue pearl on black. OK, so that's not really candy. You're going to be doing a blue pearl on black base coat. That's not really candy. I thought you were talking about candy. Kansas O'Reilly. Mix me some red Metallica, which was on 1996 for 380 a gallon. Oh, my God. Yeah, red's expensive, guys.
All right, we're going to take the last couple questions. What's up, Daniel Garcia? I'm going to do Blue Pearl on black. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Cheaper on eBay. Um, the product says Blue Pearl candy on black. Yeah, let me know. David, send me an email. Let me see what type of product you're working with. Send me an email. And Charlie, where'd, where'd Charlie go? Charlie, you might want to resend that um, email over because I never got it. Oh, God. Okay, guys, I think that's it. Sprayed finish one sealer on some wheels and then sprayed black base and it was like spraying water on oil. God, why? What happened? That's maybe that sealer was no good. That shouldn't have happened. Ricky says <clears throat> had some cracks from the sun and fade out paint. <clears throat> Rub with a vibrator, use epoxy primer and got some. Slight cracks again. <clears throat> All right, guys. So that's pretty much it. Any last questions? Any last questions? If not, I'm going to head out for now. I'm going to have to basically, I'm going to be moving this bus right now into the permanent location. Hopefully it's all leveled out and all good looking. You got it, guys. So stay tuned this week. We should have some new videos be popping out. I got to I gotta get on my guy's ass. Like, what's going on? He's backed up with the videos. Like, he busted out the BMW series for me and messed up. So I told him to redo it. And in that time frame, He, uh, I gave him more content and he's just backed up right now. But um, today we're going to, not today, but this week we're going to be priming and getting the uh, the other project, the other moped project ready for paint. Probably shoot it early next week. Candy job as well. Guys, would you want to see candy on um, on the excavator or what do you, what do you want to see? I'm thinking a purple candy would look cool on it just to spice it up. Give it some, give it some pizzazz. You know, that's all going to be documented and shared with all of you guys as well. So uh, that's going to actually be a fun project. We're going to all we're going to do is take panels off of it, spray them candy and then put the panels back on it. Super easy. No craziness. You know, I'm not painting the boom because that's going to be ridiculous. We're going to just do the whole back section um, into like a candy color. Unless I paint the gas tank, that thing's going to stay on it and I'll paint the gas tank on uh, the machine because I'm not going to be, I'm not going to take, remove the gas tank from this thing. Uh, do you think the economic situation is going to affect body shops or flipping cars? I think this economic situation is affecting everything. Everybody's getting affected. <clears throat> but the key is to basically just give people what they want. And people are always going to be looking for good, dependable cars. So if you can scoop up good, dependable cars, add your value add to it, you know, your little paint job or a little fender repair or a little tune up or whatever you're doing and raise up that that profit margin for yourself, then you're going to do fine. You know, there's no matter what the economy is, if you know what you're doing, if you know how to do it, you're always going to make money. So I don't think you should think about or worry about the economy because the it's you know people still have to live people still need a place to live people still need cars to drive people still need cars repaired all right people still have their pride they're not going to be driving down beaters unless they're absolutely really broke and they can't do anything but you know a lot of times people you know do have vanity and they want to they want to look good you know Green lime candy with yellow wheels, Tony. Um, 
Yeah, well, I have tracks on here. There's no wheels. So it's either purple. I was thinking green, but because there's so much green in the neighborhood with all the trees and grass, I was thinking purple might stand out a little bit better. Mm. But yeah, Claude. I have a 30 gallon air compressor. Should I be using a high volume, low pressure or low volume, low pressure gun? I've been using a high volume, low pressure for primer. Um, it, it all depends on your compressor size. So if you're going to be spraying a lot, you know, and you want to stretch the volume from your tank, you're going to want to use a low volume, low pressure. Okay. But generally base coats are high volume, low pressure. And then with clear coats, you can spray with a low volume, low pressure. Uh, primers, it really doesn't matter because you're spraying primer at a lower PSI overall anyway. Okay. Anywhere from 18, you know, 16 even, depending, 16 to 20, 22. That's the pressure you're spraying primer at. Because it's not really about atomization. You just want to get the material on it and wet. Yep, Ronnie says, low CFM gun to match your compressor. So, yeah, you know, if you have a smaller compressor, you're going to want to use a gun that takes less volume. How many coats of clear over flake is good? Is there too many coats? Well, yeah, there could be too many coats of clear. You don't want to overdo it. Um, I would say, I mean, generally, it's it's you're going to be putting on on custom candy paint jobs or on custom jobs. Normally, it's four coats of clear, okay, because you're you're giving it your two coats, you're letting that set, you're cutting it down, and then you're putting two more coats on top of that, and then you are color sanding and buffing that. But overall, basic paint jobs, two medium wet heavy coats, and you're good to go. Stacy says, I'm going to be painting a 1995 Ford F-150 bisection. Cool. Good luck. Um... Yeah. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'm going to drop the link uh, to learn autobodyandpaint.com for all you newbies just tuning in that want to grab some free information. Check that out. And uh, if you're in the market looking for some great spray guns, check out Zula.com uh, for some great spray guns. Uh, you actually get a free gun bud ultra lighting system uh, when investing in any Atom spray gun. <clears throat> Other than that, guys, I want to say thank you for tuning in. Hopefully, we answered your questions. I will talk to you next week. Have a great week. And, um, yeah, be healthy, work out, eat good. And, uh, and I'll see you guys around. What type of clear is good for Metal Flake? The best clear that you can get within your budget is the best clear coat that you can get. So it really doesn't matter, okay? It doesn't matter. You could put flake in any clear coat um, and, and you can flake it out. You could put flake in an inner coat. If you're a newbie, I would recommend putting flake into an inner coat. Uh, inner coat clear, which is like a clear base coat. You mix your flake in and then you spray it on evenly. You know, you could reduce chances of running because if you run, if you mix it in clear coat, um, you're going to get that, that flake run, which you're not really going to be able to sand. You can sand it flat, but you're going to still see that flake run. Um, but yeah, a lot of projects coming down the pipeline, guys. Stay tuned. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hit that like button before you leave. And I'll see you guys on next week, same time, for more auto body Q&A. And um, we'll probably be in the garage next week. So I can show you the um, the primed parts and whatever projects we got going on in there. Peace out, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Talk to you later. Bye.